Hey guys, my name is Michaela, and this is what happened when I took a boat from Fukuoka, Japan to Busan, South Korea. So this month, at the beginning of the month, was my dear friend Dana's birthday, and uh, Dana is one of my favorite people in Fukuoka because she's always down for everything. So when I asked her what she wanted to do for her birthday this year, she told me that she wanted to take the ferry from Fukuoka to Busan, Korea, and spend a few days over there. Busan to Korea was one hour before. One hour before, yes. Yes, I understand. Do you want to go get some wine? So we've gone through immigration, we've got our tickets, everything is going um, according to plan, except that today it is quite stormy and they're saying that the waves are between two and a half and three meters in height and that's quite bumpy and if luck is against us today we might actually come back to uh, Hakata. We'll see how it goes. I'm hoping we make it to Busan, but um, yeah. All right, so the JR Beetle is a two-story high-speed ferry that operates with two hydrofoils which lift the hull above the water's surface, reducing contact with waves and minimizing seasickness. It takes about three hours for the Beetle to navigate between Hakata Port and Busan International Terminal. It's normally smooth sailing between the ports. However, on stormy days like today, the three meter waves can slightly resemble a three hour long roller coaster. The good news though, is that although they warned that they may turn back because of the storm, the Beetle actually has a service rate of 97% and rarely cancels a voyage. and it was raining, the boat was rocking, uh, people were getting sick, but we made it and it's so sunny in Busan and I'm excited about that. So Busan is the second largest city in South Korea and it has a very similar vibe to Fukuoka city. With cobalt blue seas and a mountainous landscape, there's surely to be something for everyone here. At least that's what the guidebooks told us. We arrived in Busan not knowing much about it at all, the tourist office had plenty of English resources to help us out. Okay, we're in Busan Station and it's time for our first meal. This is a beef bone dumpling soup. It's a soup with a beef bone broth and uh, dumplings. It's pretty straightforward actually. And it's topped with seaweed and a little bit of egg. And Dana got the exact same thing. Except hers has mochi in it too. I think this is the mochi. Oh, there it is. There it is! Let's eat. Okay, so navigating the subway can seem a little intimidating at first. But in Busan, it's pretty straightforward. The ticketing machines have an English setting, and the station maps have station names written in English as well. Even without knowing any Korean, we could easily find our way around the city. We just came to Centum City, which is like a huge department sh store shopping mall. This mall structure is supposed to have um, the best spa facility in Busan and we're really tired. We've been up since 6 a.m. So the first thing that we want to do in Korea, in Busan, during this trip is relax at the spa, you know, maybe take a nice um, hot bath, you know, just treat ourselves. So when we first checked into the spa, the first thing we had to do was have a shower and then slip into the hot springs and uh, cleanse ourselves, make ourselves ready to enjoy the sauna and the rest of the spa facility. So now we've um, switched into these really loose fitting, comfortable, um, pajama-like room wear and we can lounge around the facility for four hours. And admission was only $15, which was incredibly cheap. And now Dana and I are outdoors. We're enjoying a foot bath. Cafe where we just got jugs of pomegranate vinegar juice because it's good for your health and beauty apparently. You guys that felt so good. We ended up staying for four hours for the whole four hours and yeah it's so nice. I'm so glad we did this. I feel totally refreshed but also very sleepy and lazy and hungry so hopefully now we're gonna find something really good to eat. Maybe some coffee. Oh yeah some coffee would be great. If this is your first time in South Korea, you cannot go wrong with Samgyeopsal. 
This is an easy choice even for the non-adventurous eater, since you have complete control over what goes in your mouth. Here we go, a beautiful lettuce wrap. You can choose your cut of meat, you can choose how to cook your meat, and you can choose what goes into your lettuce wraps. It's filling, cheap, and so satisfying. So when you visit Korea, if you're visiting for the first time, you're not sure what to eat, check out Korean Yakiniku. Eat some Samgyeopsal. It's, it's amazing. The next morning, we decided to hang out around our Airbnb and explore Samyang, the district known as the downtown of Busan. It is supposedly one of the most populated areas of Busan, but compared to the human congestion in Seoul, it didn't feel crowded here at all. Here in Samyang, we managed to do all of our shopping, stopping at all of the famous Korean beauty brands and makeup shops along the way. You're so cute. When we were done, we dropped into the underground shopping mall and headed for the subway line to check out another popular district known as Nampodong. We're in Nampodong, which is supposed to be a great place for shopping and food, but we found a little escalator and we went up to see what we could find and now we're at the top of a hill. And I just know, once we're at the top of these stairs, we're gonna get a great view of Busan from the top. At the top of this hill stands Busan Tower, and for a small fee, you can go to the top and enjoy a coffee over some breathtaking scenery. Up here you can get a very clear idea of the layout of Busan City, and admire the breathtaking beautiful ocean. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's so pretty. We can see all of Busan from up here. And you can really appreciate the scale, the scale of the city. I almost wish we came here on the first day so we could have had a better idea of the entire layout of the city, just so like we could mentally like visualize where we were. If you're traveling to Busan for the first time, I would recommend coming here on day one. Ah, that's very great. Right. So Nampodong is home to another shopping district, although this area feels a little more urban and commercially developed than Somyang. With street merchants, brand name shops, food stalls, and Busan Tower all located within walking vicinity, this area is really popular with tourists. This is a great place to test your courage and try out some street food. Thank you! <laughs> Yay! So I know that food stalls like this can be a little bit intimidating for people who can't read or speak Korean. Um, I can't speak or read Korean either, but all we did was really just point to the foods that we wanted and you know they're happy to do business with you. So we got our food cut into little bite-sized pieces and we're eating it here and it's lovely. All right, so the next must-eat food on our list is hotoku because in Busan, the hotoku has like a different filling than in Seoul. I don't really know, I haven't had one yet, but um, apparently the most delicious place is this place with this huge lineup. So now that Dana and I aren't angry anymore, we're gonna get in line and uh, see what all the fuss is about. As you can see, inside the hotoku, it looks like the filling is peanuts and sunflower seeds and some dried fruit. And this is a little bit more salty and savory than the ones um, that we've tried in Seoul. And as you saw, um, they were literally just fried in butter. So these are going to be a high calorie snack. But, um, and we'll probably get one more before we leave. Here we are, Airbnb. This Korean apartment is a very big, very spacious, and has a very tall roof, which is something you don't really see in Japanese apartments, so it's very interesting. Also, the floors are heated, which is so nice. There's stairs to the loft where the beds are. They are not made because we slept in them. This is what I thought was really, really funny. It looks like a regular old uh, cupboards over here, but when you open this, this is in fact the refrigerator. <laughs> be really hard to cook here because they only have like this little tiny thing what is it stove 
with two little burners. And then down here, I believe, is the laundry. Like, I don't know why they put the uh, laundry in the kitchen, but I guess that's a thing in Korea. Yes, ramen, ramen, some cold noodles, traditional Korean cold noodles. This will be the last thing we eat before we go back to Fukuoka. We just came back to the International Port in Busan and it's a beautiful day. They're not forecasting any major waves and it should be like clear sailing all the way to Fukuoka. So this trip is incredibly easy to make if you're living in Fukuoka. If you book early, like the earlier you book, the cheaper the ferry tickets will be. Um, we got our tickets, they were round trip, they were 9,800 yen, so $98 under 100 bucks which was really really cheap but i actually think if you book like months in advance they're even cheaper than that so if it's something that you think that you'd like to try while you're living in fukuoka don't be afraid don't be afraid i do wish we were staying longer but because it's so easy to get here and because it's so cheap i know that i'll just come back another time all right so if you're staying in fukuoka and you're looking for a nice weekend getaway that doesn't cost too much but is still very exciting um consider it consider coming to busan it's not that scary i mean if you could move from wherever the hell you lived before uh to japan i'm sure you can do a weekend trip to busan <laughs> toughen up um but yeah it's really easy the food's great there's tons to do it's it's plenty interesting enough for like a weekend so now you know it's possible. Now you know that anything is possible. Anything is possible. Have fun. Mm -hmm.